There's a lot of things that run interference with following the leadership of someone else. Fear, concern, not certain, uncertainty, all the things of that nature. But you can only go where you're familiar to go. Where it's familiar to you. Anytime you're going to learn to go in a different place, it's challenging. It's, it's awkward. If, if everybody here tonight would recognize that the Lord really isn't, He, he loves you and he, and, and he cares for you and he, and he wants those things which He's established in our life by His Holy Spirit. But He really doesn't want you to be stuck doing the same thing that you've always been doing. He wants you to grow. He, tonight, there is a resident in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, your ability to grow. Your ability to receive something in the things of the Spirit that you didn't have when you came. Huh. To be able to play music different, sing music different. Luxo de the best, the better, the Ha ha. Ha ha. Praise different, give thanks different, move different, walk different, think different, feel different. How many of you know how to make yourself feel different? No, you really don't. It's a trick question. You do not know how to make yourself. Make is the word. You do not know how to make yourself feel different. You may know how to feel different, but you cannot make yourself feel different. It's yielded to the Holy Ghost. You say, Holy Spirit, I want to learn. You know, if you just think about it, if everyone could make themselves feel different, right? Everybody would live happy. Everybody wants to live happy. There's nobody chooses to live sorrowful. No one chooses to live sorrowfully. No one would choose to live sad. No one would choose to live mad or angry or upset or hurt or wounded or, huh? People trying to, trying to, they want to try to find some way to remedy whatever's going on in their life. But you and I, all we have to do is yield to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He show us everything that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He show us everything that belongs to his life and his godliness. He'll show us how to praise. He'll show us how to shout. He'll show us how to move in the realms of divine power. He'll show us how to function in a place where self-consciousness does not grip us. It's a terrible prison. Self-consciousness, terrible prison. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will praise you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is in me, in me, in me. In me, in, 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 in you, in you, in me, and in you, blessed Redeemer, let the living word lives in me, the King of kings, he lives in me. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, name above all names, beautiful Savior, our glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is in me, all oh, the blessed Redeemer, ah, the living word. Oh, God. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Don't let things steal your affections from the Lord. Don't let things steal your affections from the Lord. Don't let it. I don't care what it is. Don't let it. Don't let the love of a loved one steal your affections from the Lord. Don't you let your concerns about a bad one steal your, steal your affections from the Lord. Don't let your interest in this earth steal your affections from. 
to the Lord. It's really idolatry, really, it is. It's really, it's worse than that because it just keeps you from getting more, from having more, to entering into that realm to where that you can be who God's created us to be. You know, men live in hate and anger and envy, hating one another, and it's, just, it's a terrible thing. You know, on the way here to church, I'm just driving down the road and bringing the Holy Ghost, and somebody's slowing down in front of me, I need to get over. Other person speeds up just to close me in. You know, you just got to go, that's it, spirit of the world. And I know there's no sense getting upset about it, it's just the spirit of the world. I'm so glad I'm not living in that. <laughs> Poor fella. Oh, Lord Jesus, touch him. Oh, he go to buy a Saturday a key, Paul. Go to heaven. Go to heaven. Go to heaven. Go to heaven. Who cares what anybody thinks about you? Just go to heaven. You won't care either. Amen. The, the things about, this is about Jesus. This is about heaven. This is about life and life more abundantly. It's about a discovery. It's about a discovery tonight. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Son, it's good to have you here tonight. Coming on with those drums, I'll tell you. Jet, 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 Josh will be here. Joshua will be here next week. You know, I, you see, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. My sons were born in the move of God. They were born in the move of God, and they were developed in the move of God. And Papa would give them no latitude to do anything else. I'm not controlling, but I am definitely interested. If we're going to play baseball, we're going to play baseball, we're going to play hard. If we're going to go snowboarding, we're going to go snowboarding, we're going to snowboard hard. If we're going to worship, we're going to get after it. Hallelujah. We're going, we're, going, we're going to minister in the things of the Spirit. We're going to go, we're going to go for everything in God. And it, I just so blessed with the rhythms and the, and the beautiful anointing and expressions that are, are, are there in, in, in my son's lives as they've given themselves over to worship and music and, and music ministry. And how, you can be seated. And, you know, what we're doing is we dedicate to see a whole bunch of folks raised up and flowing in the flowing in the beauty and the splendor of Christ Jesus. You know, really, religion does... Turn this up for me just a little bit, please. I need it up. Re really, religion doesn't have anything to offer you. It really doesn't have anything to offer you. You're just mad and upset with one another. And, you, know, and, you know, there's a lot of pretense, a lot of liturgy and ritual, but it just really isn't. It's really... It's, when it comes to, you know, joy and when it comes to peace... That's a little bit too loud. When it comes to... <laughs> the good things of heaven, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it comes to everything that you want, it can't give it to you. Only a relationship with the living God can supply what you need. Only a relationship. See, you weren't created to be an earthly person. You weren't created to live in darkness. You weren't created to live in deceit and hate and sorrow and sadness and pain and sickness and disease. We were created to live in the presence and the glory of God. God didn't create man in a desolate wilderness of darkness and suffering and pain with demons and all kinds of stuff running around. God created man in the garden paradise. Hallelujah. Which is really, really uh, the Garden of Eden, what we, could refer, what we would call the Garden of Eden, which is the Garden of Paradise, is actually a synonym for heaven. Huh? It was. God made man with an earthly body, yes, from the dirt, from the earth. But he, he created him, hallelujah, in the heavenly realm. And you and I, now that we've been recreated, I've been, see, I've been recreated, hallelujah. Jesus has an opportunity that he's made available for all men to be recreated 
in, 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 in righteousness and true holiness after his image to be recreated by the power of the Holy Spirit, recreated to where we find ourselves in him and we living in the heavenly realm. Now, let that be the very concept and understanding of what it is you're doing with your life. Don't settle out for no earthly nonsense. Don't settle out for sensual, earthly values and affections. Don't, se don't be willing to be stubborn against God and continue on in sorrow and sadness when he's commanded joy and gladness. It's just stubbornness. It's unwillingness to be obedient. People act like somehow God made them that way. God didn't make you that way, man. God made you to, if you called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God made it for you to live in a heavenly realm, to have days of heaven on earth. Come on, people. This is not fictional Christianity. This is living reality. It's a choice that you make. You're going to have to get connected with the supply that comes from heaven Otherwise, this will never be available to you, and you'll never change. And I don't know what's going to happen to people who never change. But I do know what's going to happen to people that do change. Hallelujah. I'm very certain. See, the gospel was preached to the people in the wilderness, Israel, but the Word of God did not profit them. You, you know, we understand now that the word of God will produce faith in the hearers. But I'm going to tell you something. There's another dimension to faith than just hearing the word. Because they heard the word, but the word was not mixed with faith. The word was not mixed with obedience in them that heard it. They were not willing to move forward in that which God had provided. They were not willing to lay hold on the opportunities that God had given. Fellowship with Father wasn't an excitement to them. It was to Moses. It was to Joshua. Those are terrible statistics, aren't they? Isn't that sick? Those are terrible statistics. That like Moses excited about God, Joshua was excited about God, maybe one or two others. But the other four or five million people are walking around murmuring and complaining. They're walking around, <laughs> listen, complaining and arguing. And you know what? When the Lord says he both does and will of his good pleasure in our lives, do not, argue, do not complain anymore or argue. He's not talking about with one another. He's talking, he's really not. He's not talking, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, 14, he's not really talking about one with one another. He's talking about you complaining and arguing with God and against God. Because really what happens is, is Paul uses the same terminologies that Moses used in the song that he sang in, De in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 5. There's a parallel there. And who was it, who was, who was Israel murmuring or complaining and arguing uh, 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 with, not it wasn't, a, wasn't with each other. I'm sure they were with each other because, my goodness, you complain and argue with God. You complain and argue with one another. If you complain and arguing with one another, you complain and arguing with God. Because your life is a testimony of your spiritual condition. <laughs> your praise is a declaration of your spiritual condition. God has made available for even the worst human beings to supply a wellspring that would spring up supplying an abundance of this life and glory. You can't point your finger at God and say, God, you didn't give it to me. Lord, God, you didn't do it because he's already supplied it all. You can't point a finger of accusation and act like somehow that you're, you're, what you're doing that is opposite or contrary to the word of God you know, is, is justifiable. It's not. And so what we've got to be willing to do is recognize where we're at <laughs> in this place with God. Where are we at in this growth with God? And where do we want to go? Is it, it, if we can just recognize where we're at, what we have, and what we don't have concerning the things that God has supplied, and then just simply respond properly to God, say, I want that God in my life. I want that way in my life, and then do it his way. Because what happens is I see it over and over again. People come to me and say, you know, I really want to, you know, I really want to plug in. I really want to submit to the, you know, the things of the Spirit and the things of God. But reality of it is, by and large, 90% of what people are willing to do are those things that they agree with. 
And that ain't going to get you there. Because just about everything that God is going to have you to do and teach you to do is opposite what you've been doing. Amen. And what you got comfortable with. God, the Holy Ghost is going to teach you in such a radically different way that you've got to fundamentally learn how to deny yourself. It is a verse of Scripture that is almost on everybody's lips. Most everyone knows this verse of Scripture, and very few people even know how to have a practical application. Hallelujah. Uh, see, God, God has purposed that you and I continually have an overflowing moving of his power in our lives but we voluntarily choose to have it different we voluntarily choose to live earthly we voluntarily choose to live in sorrow and sadness and complaint and problems and issue and doubt and unbelief and sickness and disease voluntary it's true <laughs> well you know reality of it is in so many respects you know weeds are just a default they just happen naturally. They are just going to grow in the absence of really any vision, any purpose, any need. You know why you cultivate the ground? Need and purpose. There's a vision, need for food, purpose to actually supply others with food. And then, of course, you know, that gets under the economics of your life. And you start idealizing whatever it is that that is going to be within the terms of some monetary reward. But look, that is just the natural things. How about the spiritual things? Dear people, people act like they can just kick their feet up and put their hands underneath their head and float on into heaven. You're not floating to heaven. You're going to float right down into hell. <laughs> the currents of this world, the courses of this world aren't flowing into heaven. <laughs> God has got a place of obedience. Listen, everything's against you in this world. Why join the league with it? I mean, the spirit of the disobedience, the course of this world, the God of this world. The power of darkness, the principalities and spiritual wickedness. If they can't take you out with the things that are wicked, those things that are just obviously against God, like the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life, Satan's going to do his work to get you consumed, wrapped up in the thorns of the cares of this life. Or another way of putting it, earthly affections. So Paul says, such a powerful word that should be just reigning over our hearts and minds. Set your affections on things above. Put your affections in the realm of that which you've been born into. I was born into heaven, man. Hallelujah. I was born into the realms and the presence of the living God. And when you get, when you, oh, Rab, I'll say, yeah, you be kind of sota. You be kananeate apurasinga. You become overwhelmed with drinking of this water of life. You become, you, oh, you, become, you become satisfied with these good things that pertain unto life and godliness. You just don't want, you just don't have anything over there in the world. It isn't, it's not attractive, it's, it's not attractive to you. You have no interest in earthly affections. They don't have a hold on you. You've got a bigger vision. It's a heavenly vision. Now what's happening is you're sowing now to the spirit. Hallelujah. See, God's people have not learned how to make a connection with Him. You're not going to make a connection with Him until your interests merge with His. Amen. You're not going to make a connection with anybody until you get common interest, commonality with them. Two cannot walk together lest they agree. God gave us a miracle new birth by His Word. We've been born of the incorruptible seed by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. It's on the inside of anybody who's been begotten of God. Somehow people don't even begin to let that live. Or if they do, they only let it live marginally. Or they go just to a certain, just to a certain dimension of growth and then they just like shut down. Why? They're not willing to take the next steps in God. They're not willing. Literally, people, you've got to understand. You've got to ask yourself, am I willing to be under the sovereign rule of Jesus Christ? You've got to ask yourself, Am I really willing to be under the rule of the Holy Ghost? Because that's a totally different life. That is not a, that is not a lifestyle of pain and agony and suffering and sorrow. 
That is a lifestyle of continually living in, in, in joy and bliss and love and grace and peace and mercy. Blessing and not cursing. But, you know, when people despite believe you and persecute you, you bless. You're just like, why? Because you're so full of praise. You know, just the complaint's not there. The argue's not there. The strife's not there. The envy's not there. The deceit's not there. What a wonderful place to live. The sorrow's not there. You long, long time ago, you took a Holy Ghost club and smashed sorrow. So it couldn't get up. You smashed it. Hallelujah. You got, you got all upset with sorrow. You read the Bible and it said... He, the redeemed of the Lord's return and come with singing unto Zion. Everlasting joy is upon their head. Sorrow and sadness is gone. And you said, wait a minute. Uh, sorrow and sadness, you're supposed to be fleeing away from me. I'm not going to entertain you. I'm not inviting you over to breakfast, lunch, and supper anymore. I'm not giving you a place just before I go to bed so I can count up all my problems and that I can pull out all of my issues out of the closet and make sure everybody's doing okay, feed a few uh, personal offenses and problems and whatnot, and have my meditation on everything that hasn't been working out right for me. Because that's, that's going in the wrong direction. People say sin's missing the mark. That is a gross understatement. In fact, but his sin is actually pointing your arrow in the abs opposite direction of the target. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I mean, listen, dear people, it's just, it just outright disobedience. And, you know, you want to you walk in obedience. You want to grow. You want to mature. You want to step into this joy. You want to know how to feel different about yourself. You want to know how to feel different about God. You want to know how to feel different about the things of the Spirit, about the things of the Lord, but you don't know how to. You don't know how to make a connection. Why? Because you maybe were raised by parents who themselves didn't make a connection, who by themselves thought that they were, you know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And all the deacons and the elders all combined, all wrapped up into one. Their ideas was better than anybody else's. And so they just basically edited everything the pastor said and edited everything the Holy Ghost said and everything, edited everything Jesus said and edited everything the Father said and, and chose uh, one or two or three things that they might do with their life. And so they got one or, two, three, one or two or three things from the trillions of things from heaven. Uh, I want you to take a hold of the trillion. I want you to get the whole lump. I want you to get the whole thing. You're going to have to throw your whole self on into this program. You're going to have to quit holding on to your life. You're going to have to be willing to say, you know what? I'm presenting myself a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God. I'm no longer going to live. It's going to be Jesus. I'm going to be full of the Holy Ghost. Let him take full control of me. I'm going to move in him, live in him. Hallelujah. Everything he says I'm going to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. I gave people a challenge a long time ago. You know the angels of the Lord are here. Did you know that? Did you know that the Holy Ghost is here? Yeah. Did you know that? He really is. Did you know that there's the open vision is actually here right now? You can actually see in the realms of the Spirit right now? You can. And I'm not just saying that in the, just from the perspective of that which it, God has said in His Word. I'm saying it by experience at this very moment. You can actually see things going on in the heavenly realm. And it's beautiful. It's kind of scary because it, it's stunning. When you look over and you see an angel sitting at the piano, it's just stunning. It's a little shocking, causes your heart to beat a little faster, and your hair stands up in the back of your neck, but nonetheless, hallelujah. If you could really see what's going on around you, dear people, you'd have a great need right now. I'm telling you right now, you'd start shaking and trembling, falling down before the presence of God, and say, oh, God, save me. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, God, the Holy Spirit, supplies a holy fear. When people don't have a holy fear, they're cut off from the Holy Ghost. When people don't have a love for, a, a, a continual development in the love for righteousness, you see, after I've been born again and created in righteousness and true holiness, men still have the knowledge of good and evil. And no man has within himself the ability to deal with the knowledge of good and evil. Only the Holy Spirit can teach you how to choose the good and refuse the evil. Jesus himself, when he emptied himself of all of his glory and humbled himself unto the likeness of sinful flesh, had to learn to choose the good and refuse the evil. He learned obedience to the things that he suffered. He gave himself over to only do the will of the Father. He was consecrated to ardent obedience. You, gotta de you, you and I, we've got to deal with the reality of where we're not consecrated to ardent obedience. God says, be happy and you be sad. That's disobedience. 
God says, be at peace and you be at war. That is disobedience. God says, have faith, you got doubt. That's disobedience. That's not being willing to cooperate and connect with him. And, of course, you know, Satan is, Satan is going to continually point an accusation against those who are going to lead you right, beginning with Father himself. And then he's going to move right on down to Jesus, who's next in his hit list. And he's going to make it Jesus' fault somehow. And then he's going to next move right to the Holy Ghost and he's going to start spewing out all kinds of accusations and blames against the Holy Ghost and make people afraid of the Holy Ghost like he's some kind of spooky person. <laughs> hey, it's what goes down. There's a lot of people that think that the manifestation of the Spirit is some terrible, scary thing. And all of this is about glorifying Jesus. Well, I can understand it, you know. Because the disciples, they got scared. When they saw Jesus walking on the water at night, people just scared. They're freaked out. Oh, my goodness. There's something more than just this earthly realm. I'm scared out of my mind. Yeah, you know what? More is going on around you from the realms, in the realms of heaven than that are going on around you in the realms of earth. But you've allowed your senses to be developed only in the realms of that which is sensual and earthly. You've allowed your affections to be captivated by things that are only temporal and meaningless. They're going to perish with the using. Huh? I'm telling you, it, God has purposed that we be absolutely, totally consumed with the heavenly. You're, uh, you, somebody say, oh, what are we going to do? Are we going to be like the monastics and leave town and go live in a cave? No. You get to now do everything that you've been doing but in a heavenly dimension. Hallelujah. Instead of you going to work in the morning, Jesus and the Holy Ghost has got to go to work in the morning. And the company's got to be blessed and everybody around you got to be blessed. And if you sit down with somebody sick, you don't have to say nothing. All you're doing is sitting there doing your work and they get healed just because of the overflow. People who have been living in an ungodliness and holiness and they once were saved are going to come under the Holy Ghost conviction and start crying behind you and your and their desk. But when we're consumed, people are consumed with their own identity. Oh, I am, a, I am an automobile mechanic, and I am so good at this. And this is my life. And oh, I am a uh, this, and I am a that. Well, how about being a son of God? How about being somebody anointed with the Holy Ghost and fire? How about being a messenger of heaven? How about being someone who's sent out from his presence? How about being one who has received all authority in Christ Jesus? If you can just get a shift here in your way you think. It's all about the way you think. Until you think differently, you're never going to do anything differently. You listen to me. As long as you think that you got to wash those dishes before you put them in the dishwasher, otherwise they're not going to be clean when they come out. You're always going to do it. And you might change for a couple of weeks because some people come around you and say, that's stupid, I can't even believe you're doing that, you're making more work for yourself, and they beat you up and after you say, while they're there, you say, okay, I'm going to do it. And then for them, you go out and you, you put the dishes in the dishwasher, and you pull them out, and you feel bad about passing out the plates because you don't believe it's clean, but you're just going to go along with the program. And it ain't going to be long because you don't feel that, you don't believe it, you don't think it, you're going to go back to your backward ways. Maybe 20 years ago, you needed to wash your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's some good technology. And if your dishwasher isn't working, let me just tell you, it's worth an investment. Get yourself a good one that washes the things. And it's going to save you a whole lot of time. And then be convinced that you can just do this. Have it. Believe it in your mind. Be convinced of these things. Then that will change your behavior. If it'll come from your inside, it'll come from your heart, it'll come from, you won't feel like you're compromising. Oh, no, they're eating off that dirty plate. I'm so ashamed of myself. I should have washed it before I put it in this way. And people live their spiritual lives like that. They won't be renewed in the spirit of their mind. They won't think different about themselves. My dad was sorrowful. And my grandfather was sorrowful. And my great-grandfather, I think they had him in the mental institution. He was so sorrowful. So that's why I'm sorrowful too. And the Lord understands. He understands. I'm the exclusion from joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm the one exclusion. That, I'm the exclusion. Everybody else can be happy. I would like to be happy. I like to be happy like you. But I can't be happy because 
this is what I believe about myself. I'm so sad. <laughs> People live constantly in the memory and I, this, is, this is an amazing thing to me that people live, but it's true. People live in the memory of their past sin and failure. Jesus washed it away, but you keep bringing it as an offering to him. You bring it as a, a remembrance offering to him. And you start reading the word, and they're reading the word about having a good conversation before men. I'll let your good deeds be evil spoken of. You sit there and start thinking about every bad thing you did in your life. And you just feel terrible about it all. And you become all spiraling down about how terrible it all is. How you blew it. That's not what the Word of God was given there for. The Word of God was given so you could do it from here on out. You could get it right. The blood of Jesus was given so that you can have all that past stuff erased. Why do you go back? Because you won't think different. You've got to think different. You won't bring into captivity your thoughts to the obedience of Christ. You let it run wild. It's just weedy. It's just a bunch of weeds. Huh? It takes people who are willing to allow the Holy Ghost to come rule them who are going to be willing to submit themselves. Listen, you want to, I practice, let me tell you what I do. I practice submission in every dimension of my life. Why? I want to learn submission to God the Holy Ghost. And if you're going to learn it, you're going to practice it in every dimension of your life. And if you don't, you're not going to have it. All you're going to have is weeds. You're not going to have a spiritual harvest. If you want to reap the things that pertain to everlasting life, the God kind of life, eternal life, unending life, forever life, then you've got to sow to the Spirit. The ways and the demeanor and the dimension of this Holy Ghost. God doesn't tell us to walk in lowliness and meekness so that we could do that with one another. He tells us to walk in lowliness and meekness so that we can do it with Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then when we do it with Him, we're going to do it with one another. There's going to be something going on in our life. But there's still going to be a whole lot of boldness and, and, and confidence at the same time while you have lowliness and meekness. There's going to be an authority against Satan. Somebody said to me, well, one time they said, oh, Michael the archangel didn't bring a railing accusation against Satan. I said, I'm not Michael the archangel. I am a son of the living God born of the Spirit in Christ Jesus, and I'm going to smash him. I'm going to tell him, get up and get out of here. I'm going to bust him. I'm going to bring down every one of his strongholds. I'm going to let him know I'm in charge, and he can't do another thing. Come on, people. That's lowliness and meekness. That's now coming under the authority and the rule and the reign of God to obey His Word, <laughs> to do it His way. We let self reign. Self, listen, I'm going to tell you, self-interest can be, in, in many respects, is nothing other than idolatry. It's, 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 it's living a covetous life, doing it your own way. God has called us to come and do it His way. He said concerning those that He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you never did it God's way. You never did the will of the Father. Well, what are we going to do? Are we going to open up the Bible and we're going to start reading verses of Scripture like we read in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14 and the Lord says to us, do not complain and do not argue and say, I'm never complaining and arguing again. I mean, you know what? If everybody would quit complaining and arguing, that'd be almost like heaven right there. Ha, huh, you could almost have heaven in your house right then, right there. You know, I want to just, I don't know what's wrong with my kids. I don't know what's wrong with my husband and my wife. I just don't know what's wrong. You're what's wrong. Ouch. Huh? You did what's wrong. Oh, that's just too much. That's too harsh. I just did too much for me to have to carry. I just can't, I just can't accept that. Well, why not? Because you can just go ahead and get forgiven right now. And if you accept it, you can go ahead and get in power with God and have such a glorious Holy Ghost change that you won't even recognize yourself. And when you do, you'll want to get rid of it quickly. Huh? It's true. You'll say, wait a minute, I've seen this glorious life in Christ Jesus, and now I hate my life in this world. That life I had in this world, ugly. I'm not having that no more. Yeah. People, it, it, it's really not that difficult to begin to step in to all the dimensions of God's divine power and glory. The fundamental reality of what Father wants us to do is to connect with Him. There's a supply. 
The husbandman will come, our beloved will come, and when we hear his voice, he will call to us, and if we're, we know how to move in the Holy Ghost and we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we'll be able immediately then to execute his will and do with him what he's doing. But if we don't know, if we don't know how to move in the things of the Spirit, if we're not connected with the Holy Ghost, we'll say, time out, I'm running out of oil. Yeah, you ran out of oil years ago. You just now finally recognize because of the urgency and the sense of the need, you read, oops, I've been out of oil. Yeah, you, yeah I, should, I noticed that about 10 years ago. You just know it because the urgency of the need caused you to become aware of your condition. Hello. Uh, man, I'm going to tell you right now tonight, God the Father has opened up the opportunity for us to be so overwhelmed, so filled with the Spirit. Ooh. He, in fact, if it is, he tells us to continually be filled with the Spirit. What better place is there to be filled with the Spirit than in church? He tells us to be, be in due to Christ Jesus and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, sometimes I look at Christian people, I don't know. I think maybe they're actually manifesting about what they look like in the coffin. I don't know. Sometimes it looks really bad. It's the eyes are sunk in, mouth partly open. And I'm thinking, geez. It's this is what the world is looking at and seeing as a light that shines under the world. The world has no light. The world is in darkness. Jesus is the light. And he made you and I to shine as the luminaries on his behalf. And if we're not moving in the things of the Spirit, then there's only darkness. And if the light that is in us be darkness, then how great is that darkness? The only light is his presence. The only light that we could have is the presence of Jesus. <laughs> the presence of Jesus is an act of obedience. It's an act of connectivity with what God is doing. It's first and foremost knowing that these things of the Spirit is God's will for our life. Be convinced that it is His will for our lives. Secondly, knowing that it's available. And then third, you want it more than anything else. These are the conditions. If you don't meet those conditions, you can't have it. You've got to believe that these things of the Spirit, this way of living, this heavenly life, this life of joy, hallelujah, unspeakable and full of glory, <laughs> supplied by the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. So what I, I'm, I'm under the inspiration, I'm under the literal the, the, <laughs> impacts of the divine power of God moving upon my life springing up on the inside of me. I believe that he's with me and in me. If you don't believe that, it, you're never going to live that until you will accept that, until you begin to think different about yourself, until you, be, you grab a hold of Jesus saying, listen to me, I am with you always. Always. Even unto the end. Listen to me, or behold, or lo, I am with you. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost to be with you and in you. You got to start thinking a bit different about yourself. All of a sudden, then, the reality of God's presence begins to grip your life, and you begin to do things differently. You behave differently. You have access to the things of heaven that before you didn't have them. You had to get down on your knees and pray for a long time or fast or whatever and still didn't get it. Huh? Because it's a realm of doubt and unbelief. Pharisees fasted twice a week. They never got a move of God in their whole life. Pharisees, my goodness, they've been fasting two times a week and they just got finished with a whole, like, you know, seven days of, you know, laying it all out there before God and, you know, Passover. It's kind of like a lot of prayer time, extra Bible time. You know, it's like about eight to ten hours a day. No, literally. Bible time. And then they all kind of go over there to John's Baptist, John the Baptist. He's, well, everybody go over there and see what's happening over there. And then the preacher looks up at him and says, you offspring of vipers. Where did you find out that the wrath of God was about to be poured out upon you? How did you hear? That's what fasting resulted in their life. <laughs> That's all their religious observances. 
the man of God told them that they were born of Mr. and Mrs. Serpent. The offspring of vipers. Oh, God. Wouldn't you just hate the Holy Ghost look at you and say, here, you think you all good and wait, ready to go? My, you've been doing it all, you big old roby thing. <laughs> you got all this self-confidence and how good you think you are. And after all, you're not too bad. After all, you know, God is loving and... And all the other self-justifications in the prophet of God says, by the Holy Ghost, you are, are you born of mama and papa snake. You're the offspring of snakes. And then begins to say, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. I've tried, I tried early on in translation to make that particular Greek word prove because it made more sense to me. Bring forth fruit to prove your repentance. But it isn't that at all. Is to, it is to make oneself worthy, worthy to stand in a, prop, in, a, in a certain company. In this particular instance, worthy to stand before God. Come on, man. Come on, people. God's called us to be holy even as he is holy. And when we grab a hold of that, we're going to we're gonna begin. We're going to begin to pass this time of our sojourning here in fear, as Peter said. The Lord Jesus said, without absolute any hesitation and no way that you can dilute it, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. He, he said that if, if he told us to purify ourselves even as he is pure, to walk even as he walks, to be even as he is, to live even as he does, to have his faith. I mean, come on. Well, there's, what's going to happen if you don't believe that? The urgency of the need is never going to seize your heart. And you're going to pass a so time. You're going to pass the time of your sojourning here. Being consumed with the affairs of this life. And it ain't going to work out good for you. You're going to miss out on heaven. Heaven's already begun. Heaven's underway. Jesus is already crowned king. It's not going to be in a future day. Hey, newsflash. Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. He now reigns. He go robo sante. Jesus reigns. Jesus, the King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. Raba sekina masotoye. He right now is above all principality, might, and dominion. He right now is Im intimately involved in what's going on in this meeting tonight and the response of every person's heart. He's laying it out there. You will be brought into question on that day for how you hear. God tells us, be careful how we hear. The Shema is all about, hey, listen, when you hear, your responsibility level just went through the roof. Take heed how you hear. You now have a responsibility. Having heard that God has made such a wonderful life available to us for us to just almost take it and just throw it aside as some meaningless opportunity that you don't have time for. I'm going to tell you right now, you're the unjust steward who received of the Lord a talent. You received of the Lord a certain amount of his resources, of his wealth. And you said, look, I have other fish to fry. I have other interests. I don't have time for you. I know that you are a hard guy. And I know that you are controlling and that you reap where you did not sow. And you gather where you did not lay up. And so because I've got other needs and I've got other interests. And I've got other things that God knows I need to get done. I put your wealth and all that you supplied to me right here in the earth. And I've got it all wrapped up in a nice little napkin. So that when you could come you could have what's yours. Now leave me alone. He says, take that wicked servant and deliver him over to the tormentors. He did not value my life. He did not value my ways. 
His heart was not raptured by my invitation to come and receive of all that I have. God has privileged us with the opportunity to know a love that goes beyond knowledge. To know the love of God. And has made it very clear that this is what demarcates his people. And that this above all things must be in our lives. Otherwise we are nothing and have nothing. Nothing in God. And he's not talking about, I'm just trying to like you, but you're just so hard to live with. He's talking about the love that commended his love towards us when we were enemies, when we were alienated by wicked works. God so desiring our relationship to be with us, he spared no expense. He spared not his own son. But offered him up for the sins of us all. And when I begin to accept that, when I begin to value it, when I begin to stand in awe of what he's done for me, because I'll let the Holy Ghost show me, because only the Holy Ghost can reveal these things. I'm telling you right now, no man of you reading the Bible is ever going to make this known. You're going to have to go God's way. You're going to have to obey God. And when you do, your eyes will be open, and you'll no longer be spiritually blind, and you'll be able to see what He's done for you. And when you know what He's done for you in Christ Jesus, you know what He will do for you now in Christ Jesus. Shall He not also buy Him? Ah, so freely give us all things. Hallelujah. He's my provider, my perfecter, and my protector. I have no need to defend myself. Somebody said, aren't you going to defend yourself? <laughs> you have no idea who's with me. <laughs> you have no idea who's on my side. The one that's on my side said, shh, said nothing. Until you can begin to observe what it is he's doing because you read his word. I know what he's doing because I read his word. Somebody said, how can you say you know what God's doing? I read his word. It describes who he is and what he's doing and what he wants to do and what he expects of us and what he's purposed for us to do and how he's purposed for us to act. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name you'll give yourself to doing what you were created to do on a daily basis. You created to praise Him. Huh? You created to rejoice in the Lord. I mean, how many people get out and practice rejoicing in the Lord? Hey, that is good. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus because you're supposed to. And if you don't, and, and, and I'm, I'm telling you right now, it don't take long, man. The Holy Ghost is going to be right in the big middle of all that. It don't take much dancing before the Lord, and the Holy Spirit is going to take it to another level. Hallelujah. <laughs> so some ministers were telling me one time, I used to be really excited, very emotional about things God. And, uh, <laughs> and so I did not know how to behave as a dignified pastor. And so I would jump around and I would run around and dance and twirl and shout and sing. And it wasn't, I mean, I'm telling you right now, by and large, completely, totally unconscious of it. Just caught away in heaven. When the Holy Ghost moves upon you, begin to dance. I'm just told, it wasn't about I didn't, those self-conscious, just caught away. I mean, when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon your heart, you dance. And it doesn't take long, take much to get into the dance. God's really into the dance. And so the preacher says, listen, you know, preachers really shouldn't be, they shouldn't do that. You need to let, encourage everybody else to jump around, to just do the hop. <laughs> Do the charismatic hop, do the hop. Or maybe run around in a circle. But don't do all the rest of this stuff, because that's just like, that's weird. Well, I think the charismatic hop's a little strange, actually. I think the little circle run is kind of weird. Especially when people start running around in a circle until they fall down. And you know they didn't fall down on the anointing, it's a pure exhaustion. <laughs> And I went home that night, and I was just, you know, because I practice submission. I just practice submission. I say, okay, Father, these are your servants. These are your men. They're concerned about your reputation. <laughs> I was trying to believe that they were concerned about mine. I was just having a hard time believing it. But I was, I was certain that they believed about, believed God's, that they were concerned about God's 
reputation. I was up one night and I was just with a friend of mine and we were up in the Arctic and, you know, and, and he, you know, I, he had me go up and worship and I got a little carried away up there in the Arctic. <laughs> and one of the preachers who pioneered missions up there said, you, you really need to settle down. You're being an example to all of these young Inuits here. And I, I looked and I said, is it a good one or a bad one? <laughs> oh, no, you're not supposed to be jumping around and dancing like that. We don't believe in that. And, you know, I'm like, wow, I wonder, does God believe in it? You reckon God believes in it? And she didn't really want to discuss it. And so I had a number of, like, events like this. And so I said, Lord, well, what do you want me to do? You know, if you just want me to do the hop, I'll do just do the hop. <laughs> or if you don't want me to do the hop, if you want me to do the circle run, I'll do the circle run. <laughs> Lord, if you want me to be, wear the tie and just be very, you know, you know, whatever, I'll do whatever. And that night, I, when I went home, it was, it was a Sunday night, I went home and the Lord gave me a vision of the night. And he showed me how the seraphims react to his presence. And so, all of a sudden, Isaiah chapter 6 became totally different for me. Because we get a glimpse of how the seraphims act or react to his presence. With two wings, they cover their face. Two wings, they cover their feet. And with two wings, they do fly. And they're screaming. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> this whole earth is filled with the glory of the Lord. And I'm telling you right now, they have some... In the vision the Lord gave me, it was acrobatics. They moved like flashes of lightning. And such incredible ecstasy and beauty. And, and you know, come on. It just blows ballet completely out of the water. The fluidity of it. It took me to a whole other level. And I, from there on out, I'm like, you guys have seen nothing yet. <laughs> You've seen nothing yet. And it really isn't about the dancing. And it's really not about so much the singing. And it's not so much about the clapping. And it's not so much about the shouting. It's about the connecting. It's just that these things are part of what happens to us when we make the connection. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, take two... You know, high voltage, three phase wires in one in one hand, one in the other, and kind of just like bring them both up to your head at the same time. You're gonna make a connect. You won't live. You're gonna have a serious jolting. There's going to be a real experience for you there. Listen, there is a connectivity with God. God, Father is purpose that we grow up into Jesus Christ into all things. That's what he said, to grow up into him into all things who is the head. He has purposed a life of maturity. If he want to just make it a process of sanctification, a process of getting saved, that's wrong. That's completely and totally wrong. He saved us. Paul defines salvation in Titus 3, 5. He saved us by the washing of the water and renewing. By the washing of the water of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Water of regeneration. The washing of water of being made a new creation. That's, you can't get cleaner than getting, you know, somebody said, how can you, how, how, how do we get clean? I mean, goodness, you get yourself a new spirit and you get yourself a new heart. My goodness, you real clean. Hallelujah. You're brand spanking new. You just driven this thing, just drive this thing off the showroom floor. Huh? Amen. And this realm, this, this new creation only interacts, only is alive, only lives in the heavenly realm. It only lives by the breath of God. It only lives by the Spirit of the Lord. The maturing is the only process here. God has purposed that we start off this wonderful salvation, wonderful new birth. Like Cornelius' house did, <laughs> where the Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us and we begin to prophesy. We begin to speak with an utterance, a prophetic utterance, a divine utterance of Holy Ghost glory that is so miraculous that it, it, it defies all concepts and knowledge of men, these heavenly tongues. God, at the very onset of the new birth, you can be the vilest person that ever lived. 
You can be so immoral and so twisted and so messed up inside like the woman who had been married five times and was living with a man who wasn't her husband. And as soon as you take of this wonderful gift of salvation, it becomes a wellspring on the inside of you springing up with the life of God, the unending, eternal life of God. My goodness. All you need is maturing. I've watched so many people sit around the gifts of the Holy Ghost that are resident in this place that operate time, day in, day out, meeting in, meeting out. Most of the meetings, all nine gifts of the Spirit operate in the place. The other night we did, we did a uh, school of the Spirit, and, and I just helped lay out and describe how all nine gifts of the Spirit plus function in the, in the taking of the nation of Nepal. Where people received dreams. People I didn't know in Nepal received dreams about me coming. And they became the key people that organized it. How that God gave me an open vision. Then, and with the open vision, we were able to give the nation a word of knowledge and tell them that the 40-year war was coming to an end. And we were able to tell them that, that uh, Parliament... The government would recognize the church as an ally and not a foe. And that there would be an alliance, a federation of churches formed, both of which happened in two months. Out of that, God then began to do greater miracles. These things are going on all the time, and yet people are oblivious to them. The, the office of tongues and interpretation of tongues, everybody in this place ought to already be have, flowing in the interpretation of tongues. Everybody in this place ought to be functioning and flowing at any moment, any time, flowing, easily flowing in prophecy. As soon as that, you know, I just, I was so blessed. Crystal started playing on Wednesday night, and she, I told her to play a song, and she got all carried away in prophecy. And she began to sing that prophetic song. So as soon as she began to sing it, it hit me, because I'm sensitive to anybody prophesying. Hallelujah. And it's because what happens? How do I know somebody's prophesying? Same prophecy hits me and I start prophesying too. That's just the way it works. And it's just the singing of the praises to God. It's the shouting unto Him. It's the glorifying in Him. It's declaring all of His wonderful works. You're going to have to be willing to get connected. Dear people. And that means that it's going to be a radical shift in your life because you can't do your things your way anymore you got to say, well, what do I got to change? You're, ask me, what do I got to change, Pastor? Change, Pastor. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> so that should make it pretty easy. <laughs> you won't have to think too much about that. Now those who are born of the Spirit are hungry to do that. You want that. You're not, I just don't like them. <laughs> He's being mean tonight. Angry prophet. He does not recognize how mature I am. <laughs> People, I want to, believe me. <laughs> Bottom line of it is, every time I think that I'm growing and maturing in God, I get a glimpse of heaven and realize I'm just a baby. Every time I think I'm getting somewhere, I have an encounter with God and go, oh my goodness. <laughs> Lord, I'm so hungry for you. I haven't even gotten started here yet. This is the way it is. Hallelujah. God's calling us to his God maturity. I usually like to take the word Greek word teleos and only refer to his teleos as mature, maturation, maturity. But when God uses be perfect, even as I am, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, you can't translate teleos maturity because God don't need to mature. Uh-uh. The excellence of character. He's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness because he's called us to glory and excellence of character. You're without excuse. You can't say, oh, God, I, uh, I couldn't do it. You know, we're all just sinners. There's none righteous. No, not one. We're a bunch of lower than worms, more lower than a worm belly people. That's not the saints of God. We're the holy people of God. He calls us his saints, his holy ones. Newsflash, saints means holy ones. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God calls us his holy ones. It's a, the, all the Bible is written to the holy ones. Amen. Amen. It's good to be a holy one. You need to think different about yourself. I'm a holy one. I'm a holy one. God, the Holy Ghost, is with me and in me. And where God, the Holy Ghost, is, Jesus is there and Father is there as well. Hey, now I have, I, have, I have all confidence and boldness that I have access into a realm of every dimension of the exploits of God. It's not me doing it because I recognize that God's with me. Watch what's going to happen now. Hallelujah. 
I've got the supply of joy anytime I need it. I got the supply of love anytime I need it. I got the supply of peace anytime I need it. I got the supply of faith anytime I need it. I got the supply of healing anytime I need it. I got the supply of miracles anytime I need it. I got the manifest presence of Jesus anytime I need it. Let me just tell you something. The more you give yourself to functioning and cooperating with the manifest presence of Jesus, the stronger it becomes. And the stronger it is in you, the more it is manifested through you. You can't sit around and try, oh, you should, you should see me at home. <laughs> you kidding me, man. It ain't for home. It's for the church. You put it in the church for you to function as a member in the body of Christ. We've seen you because whatever's really going on in your life is manifested here in this place. Amen. That's what the church is about. It, it's a place where the light shines, where everything is made manifest. Somebody said, I feel really good till I come to the meeting. Yeah, you're manifesting. <laughs> What's really going on in your life is now coming out. That's right, because the fire's burning in his place, and all the scum's coming to the top. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the problems are going are, are gonna, to gonna start popping out. Hey, I tell you right now, there was a preacher sitting on the front row. A, a friend of mine was ministering, and he got after him, and he was going after it. I mean, the fire of God was getting hot. The anointing, the manifest presence was intense. And one of the preachers reached out with his head like a dog and tried to bite him. He totally lost control of himself. <laughs> he totally lost control. He, like, he was all dressed really nice, neat, very respectable, <laughs> had a large church. But what happened in his life is under the anointing, he manifested what was really going on. He was a dog. <laughs> his dog, man. Unclean spirit. He, religious spirit. What do religious spirits do when Stephen started flowing, functioning the anointing? They did what the preacher did. They started biting him. Ah! I mean, you got to, you really, something really bad happens to you when you start reverting to your teeth. Ah! Not your hands. You're going after somebody with your teeth. Jesus. I don't, I don't want any self-righteousness. I don't want any self-justification. I want the light of God to shine upon my life and show me what's really going on. Amen. You should want the light of God. To, you should be hungry and thirsty saying, Lord, let your light shine. Whatever goes down, I know whatever I have to face or whatever I have to deal with or whatever I have to come to terms with, I know that you're going to give me the grace and the provision to be what you've called and purposed me to be. I don't have to live with my ugly self. Say, everybody can shout right now. If you didn't have any other reason to shout all night, you could shout now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I don't have to live like this. I don't have to live all broken down no more. Tired and broken down. Can't have none. <laughs> it's all been made available for you. Uh, one day I gave something to Joshua. And, oh, I remember what it was. I told Joshua, Joshua, you can go outside and play right now. The boys had, had to be disciplined. And I said, Joshua, go ahead, go, out and play, go outside and play. And Daniel's going, what about me? And I'm just not really, I'm just kind of ignoring him. He's going, Dad, what about me? Dad, what about me? Dad, what about me? What about me? What about me? I said, son, you can go outside and play too. And then after that happened, I said, uh, Father, what about me? What about me? I thought, this is work. This works. I know how it had an impact on me. Dad, you really need to be disciplined because of something that he did. Okay? And I was really going to basically, you know, I was mulling over, you know, you're going to be confined to your room. Go play with your toys. I was mulling over. And, what about me? Dad, Josh was outside. What about me? And it so touched my heart. I immediately go and well, I know that what this is going to do to Dad's heart, Papa's heart. Father, what about me? Father, what about me? It works. <laughs> it works. Father, I want to flow in your joy. I want to flow in your love. I want to flow in your goodness. I, 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 listen, people, listen, let me straighten you out so that you can have a blessed day tomorrow. Amen. Go ahead, give yourself a break, and let me get in your space so that you can live in the goodness all day tomorrow. So that you don't have to live broken down no more. Let's go ahead and get this thing fixed, man. Huh? I mean, if somebody needs to say, how long are we going to be broken down? As long as you keep, you know, fiddling around. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, really, I really love this, this song that a dear friend of mine sings. And, and he, he, God just done such a wonderful, miraculous thing in his life. And the miracle power of God so revealed in his life. And, you know, Father's using him now to shake nations and take him to a whole nother level of shaking nations. And, and he loves to go to the churches and sing to the people, I surrender half. Lord, I surrender half, half to you, Lord, half to me. I surrender half. And recognize that it's the Holy Spirit that is saying it because that's on the better side of things. And yet God really actually in his loving kindness and tender mercy actually works with us and accepts us and, and begins to move in our lives as much as we'll allow him to. But what happens when we surrender all? What happens we say when we begin to say, wait a minute, I'm getting this. I'm a little slow, but I'm getting this. I no longer live. <laughs> it's Jesus that lives. Christ lives. Hallelujah. I got rivers of God issuing out of me. I've got an unlimited supply of heaven right here dwelling with me. I've got Christ Jesus interceding on my behalf. I have the Holy Ghost making intercession for me. I got the Father involved in the same kind of prayer. I've got all heaven mobilized on my behalf. What happens as we begin to make a connection with the Holy Ghost? Just agreeing with His Word. Getting, when you agree with His Word, you're going to get heavy about it. You can't, get, you can't be sad about being blessed. You can't be sad about having all things provided for you according to His riches and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is an obedience of your will. It is an obedience of your will. God wants you to quit living according to your own desires and start living to the will of God. This is how Jesus modeled this for us. He said, you can quit living for your own self and start living for what Father's purposed you to be. He's purposed you and I to shine as lights in the midst of a perverse and crooked generation. He's commissioned us to and helped us to understand that we're not of the darkness. We are the light. We're children of the day. We're supposed to rise and shine. As lights into the world. Jesus said you are the light of the world. That's the sun. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the noonday star. That isn't one billion light years away. I'm not a little. This little light of mine. That's false doctrine. This little light of mine. Ain't no little light of yours. It's go by a am I? Your light has come. It's Christ Jesus. That's no little light. Put it under a bush, you'll know. There's a connection that's got to be made. You and I have to be, be willing to believe that the Holy Spirit has took taken our lives and baptized us down into the person Christ Jesus. We got to believe within that framework of thinking that we no longer live. It's Christ Jesus that lives. Within that, we have to be willing to accept that God has empowered us to be what he's called us to be when he filled us with his Holy Spirit. That he's with us and he's in us. And he will be with us and in us forever. Not for just a short period of time. And then we begin to understand more perfectly that we are, as it were, members in the body of Christ. And we begin to value the fact of who God has made us to be. And then in that willingness to cooperate and connect with Him and submit to Him, then the Holy Spirit provides to us the manifestation of this divine power and His glory so that every person can profit. He decides. He decides. How these things are going to function. We move in these things by the Holy Spirit according to His will. He divides individually to each person according to His will. They all spoke with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. That's the way all the gifts of the Spirit function and work. 
There's a connection that's got to be made. It's not just about the connection for the gifts of the Spirit, even though that that's what is highlighted in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And that is what needs to be highlighted when we're talking about how the church is to be the church. How the people that are, are part of the church who are saved and redeemed and placed into the body of Christ are supposed to act. Because to believe anything else is to take away from the Word of God. The context there isn't about the fruits of the Spirit. It's about the gifts of the Spirit. But I also understand and know that the same Holy Ghost that supplies this wonderful dynamic of the power of God functioning in all of our lives so that we can be the church. Listen, until the life of Jesus is manifested by the power of the Holy Ghost, there is no light. Now, you don't want to run the risk of standing there on that day and the Lord said, you never functioned as a member in my body. You did your own thing. You listen to me. I tell you right now, believe you me, I have had this conversation with Father again and again. Father, I don't want to do my own thing. I want to be completely under your divine power and authority. I ask you, oh God, don't let me move outside of that which you have decreed. Father, I submit everything I have, everything that belongs to me, anything that's not of you, take it away right now. I don't want it. You're safe doing that with God. And what's going to happen is I've found that Father will respond to such a cry and begin to show you, okay, well, I don't want that. Don't do that. Here, come over here. Let me show you how to do this. Come here. Let me show you how to speak the truth and love. Come up here. Let me show you how to walk in peace. Come up here. Let me show you how to move in the gifts of the Spirit. Come here. Let me show you how to function in the Holy Ghost. Let me show you how to yield to the Holy Spirit. Let me show you how naturally it will come. If you'll mind the things of the Spirit, if you enjoy the Holy Ghost, if you enjoy the things that the Spirit of the Lord is doing, which is not complaining or quarreling, by the way, because that's opposite. That's yielding your members unto death. Not unto life. That's sowing to the flesh. You're going to reap corruption. It's going in the opposite direction. You begin to remember, yield your members to the Holy Ghost. You just begin talking to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want you to have complete control over my life. You give yourself over to everything He's doing. He's doing love. He's doing joy. He's doing peace. He's doing goodness. I'm not going to have badness. Badness try to rise up in my mind and my thoughts. You know where every one of your feelings and every one of your dispositions and your demeanor and the things of your life, you know where it all begins? In your mind, in your imaginations. In your reasoning, in your logics. Actually, the word for arguments is dialogismos. Dialogismos, which is a word that comes, which is a very similar word to the word that is found there in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. That is translated imaginations, which is the logics and reasons and rational thinking of men. Your logic and your reason and your rational thinking and your perception and your figuring it out and you dealing with your little, you know, tinker toys and your little building blocks of knowledge and information is never going to lead you into the things that God has for you. It's going to work. It's going to oppose it. God says that you've got to cast it down. You've got to learn how to do it. If you learn how to be just take advantage of walking in the mind of the Spirit. What is the mind of the Spirit? Oh, what the mind of the Spirit? Like it's some kind of esoteric thing. The mind of the Spirit is to enjoy yourself. The mind of the Spirit is to be always thankful. Hallelujah. The mind of the Spirit is to walk in love, to, to be exceedingly happy, to walk in peace, to have peace that passes understanding. It's the mind of the Spirit. To be in goodness, not in badness. To be in faith and not in doubt. Well, when you give yourself to these things, and you want that, and you love this Holy Communion, and you love this heavenly realm, and you really deal genuinely, in reality, you deal genuinely with what it means to be led by the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit. What happens is you naturally have this wonderful working and operation of the insight of the knowledge of God, there's the word of knowledge is just available. Just comes right out of your mouth, just like any, just, uh, just common, ordinary. There's the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, just right there. Discerning the spirits is just right there. People are never going to move in discerning a spirit until they cast down suspicious spirits, critical spirits, criticism, suspicion, uh, work out of envy and hate. And they work counter to insights of the divine. You'll never have discerning the spirit so long as you're critical and suspicious. You just got to get yourself over in love and you won't be that way no more. 
If you get yourself over love, you have no problem esteeming everybody better than yourself, including the pastor. <laughs> Amen. That's a hard one, ain't it? Especially for us over here in the independent United States of America. Where we all kings of our own castle and we all have the right, you know, whatever. Freedom of speech. Ain't nobody got freedom of speech except the devil. Everybody else is having to pay for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you willing to pay? I'm going to pay. I'm going to hold forth the word of life. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to hold forth the word of life as a living epistle. I understand that's what the Lord is saying in Philippians 15 and 16. Huh? He, he's telling us to walk blameless and pure. To shine as lights in the midst of a perverse and crooked uh, generation. Where we shine as lights into the wor world, holding forth the word of life, being li these living epistles. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I've been driving down the road and just happened to sneak up on somebody on the way to church screaming at their wife. <laughs> I've been driving down the road here looking over to see some woman basically slapping her husband upside the head on the way to church. And her mouth about that wide open. And I was like, woo, act like you didn't see that. That's pretty ugly. Everybody else got to see that too. That's terrible ugly. Huh? And it's okay. They can get to church and go, in the cross. Because they get to repent. And we're not going to be concerned about it. We say, oh, you just, you're just slapping your, head, your husband upside the head. No, because we believe in repentance. Uh -huh, I would rather see somebody just lift their hands and begin to go away worshiping the Lord. At least, you know, moving in that direction at any rate. <laughs> and they're sitting down feeling all bad about themselves. Letting the self rule you and control you will get you nowhere. God, the Holy Ghost, will never have you sitting down there sulking over all your failures and problems and issues. Never. <laughs> Jesus came to deliver you from your issues. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he came to deliver you from your problems. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He came to, ha, ha. Hallelujah. I want life with only life in it. I don't want life with just a little sprinkle of death. <laughs> I want life with only life in it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know that when I breathe out this last breath, that I'm going to be in the roll call of heaven. I want to know that the. I want to know that everything is right with God. I have a healthy dose of the fear of God came right to me by the Holy Ghost. The more you yield to the Holy Ghost, the more you have the fear of God. The more you have an awe and reverence of God the more you can't go to sleep at night without making sure. Hallelujah. I love him, and, and I know that he loves me, but I know that he has zero tolerance for sin. And he's not changing. He's not changing any of his disposition and his ways and his law because he loves me so much. He's given me an opportunity to know him. He's given me the light of his word to under fully understand and the revelation of the Holy Ghost to even understand better. And you and I need to make the connection. We need to understand how to make the connection with the Holy Ghost. You can't receive anything of the Holy Spirit until you're born of heaven. We've got to understand how to make the connection with the Lord Jesus Christ on the level that he's in us and we're in him. We've got to understand how to make the connection with the Lord Jesus Christ in the framework that we are members in his body. We eyes, we nose, we feet, we ears, we hands, we arms, we legs. Hallelujah. We got to understand the responsibility that rests upon our shoulders as the, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God didn't, uh, there's not, uh, one of the manifestations of the Spirit is not to sit in the, in, the, in, the, in the seat. One of the manifestations of the Holy Ghost is to sit in the seat and be quiet. I'm going to say that. It only gives you a couple, nine options. 
word of wisdom, word of knowledge here for you. When we're worshiping and singing, people, it's your time. It's your time. It's your time to get activated. It's your time to begin to move in prophecy. It's your time to learn the prophets in the house. The, pro the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the prophecy is in the house. You can lay hold on it. You're, are you going to have challenges? Are you going to feel awkward when all of a sudden you begin to launch out going in a direction that you've never gone before? Yeah, you are. It's not familiar territory. You just want to run around in a circle. It's a well-beaten path. <laughs> do the hop. Do the charismatic hop. Do the hop. The Lord wants to take us up into, into higher heights and deeper depths than him. He's purpose that we know what, he wants us to know what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth. Now, we've got to be into this. Once again, first of all, you've got to know it's the will of God. Second of all, that you've got to know it's available. And third, you've got to want it more than anything else. If you don't want it more than anything else, if you can take it or leave it, okay, God, here I am. Here I am. You want to use me that way, I'm, you know, I'm good with it. You're going to get nothing. If you're double-minded, you're going to get nothing. It's a consecration. It's a commitment. Just like everybody in this place here knows commitment. Everybody in this place understands what it means to do something that's sacrificial so that you can have something that you want. Nobody voluntarily gets out of bed at 5.30 in the morning and goes to work. Oh, I love going to work. <laughs> There's a reward. Well, Father's got many rewards for those. There's unending rewards. He has many rewards. He has an abundant number of rewards for those who seek him. You are going to have to understand how to make a connection in the context of the body of Christ with one another. With the Lord Jesus, with the Holy Ghost. First of all, with the Lord Jesus as a member in his body. Right? Right? With the Holy Ghost who's supplying the manifestation as a member in the body to function properly in the revelation of who Jesus is. And in that, you're also making a connection with one another. That's last, not first. Some people try to make it first. But it's got to be a part of it. You've got to understand how to honor the anointing. One of the things that have lacked right here in this church. And Joel's seen it. Joel Stuck's still seen it. He said, he said you, got, you, have, you know, you guys got, you got parents that aren't releasing their kids over to the, over to the ministry. Over to the, to the leaders in the youth ministry. That's just hellacious. It's just demonic. What are they going to get? What you got to supply to them? You don't know how to make a connection. You're not honoring authority. Either it's a church made by God or it's not. If it's not a church made by God, go find one that is made by God so you can get a connection. And you can come under authority, under those people who have been gifted by the Holy Ghost to do these things directly by the Spirit. So it, the, the anointing and the supply of the Spirit can flow to you. Right? The door is wide open. We didn't lock the doors. We're not like Amy Simple McPherson. We didn't lock the doors. They're white. I mean, that's just one thing she did one time. She went out on the street and started screaming and hollering. A bunch of people came around. And when they came around, she took off running into a building. And then they all ran in after her because she thought, they'd, what's going on with this woman? And she had somebody lock the door. And she said, now that you're all here, let me tell you what I was screaming about. <laughs> screaming about the lostness of your soul. Pretty good, huh? Great one. Yeah, Amen. They got her, that launched her ministry. <clears throat> and tell them what God's going to do through you. What, you think you can go it alone? If you think you can go it alone, you've got a, you've got a warped idea of heaven. If you think, people said, one time some people come to me, and they, you know, they just kind of arrogantly said, we co-laborers together with you. I said, you're not co-laborers with me. You sit down and shut up. Maybe later on you will be. They got all mad. They left and got upset. And I mean, this total devastation hit their life. I didn't pray for devastation. It was their arrogance and their pride, co-laborers. You're not co-laborers with me. If God places you in an office, fine, you co-laborers. But don't come in here and bring your humanism and say, I'm co labor with you because we voting. Because I'm just as old as you are. And one person said, I've known God, I've walked with God longer than you. That, doesn't make, a, that doesn't, doesn't make any difference at all, man. 
Understand what it's about. And it's not about you coming up against me. It's an arrogance against what God set up in his kingdom. It literally shuts down the flow of the anointing. Let God do what it is he wants to do. I'm interested in people operating and functioning and flowing in the anointing. Fifteen years, the people, 15 years later, the people came back to me, fell down on their face before the Lord and said, please forgive us. We had no idea how arrogant we were. How wrong we were. Thank you for correcting us. Thank you for not listening to that for one second. And their lives today, the anointing that's in their lives today, their lives today is amazing. You don't have to go, you don't have to go through heaviness and problems and issues because you want to be co-laborer. Huh? Somebody said, we co-laborers together with Christ. Yeah, we are. Now come on over into Christ and understand what that looks like because that's a different attitude. Hallelujah. And it's not going to be, it's not going to have the big mouth like the little horn with a big mouth. Huh? Declaring who he is. And that's the Antichrist spirit. Right? There is a brokenness. There is a humility. There is submission. There is... There, there, it, there's making yourself of no reputation and just, Lord, here I am. I just want to know you. I want to be used by you. I want to function. I want to flow in you. Whatever job you give me to do, I'm happy to do it. And really, you know, that, you know, when we begin to talk to, about that dimension of it, it really causes people's dander to get up. It really causes people to feel very, very uncomfortable. But it has to be talked about because, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, the original sin is rebellion and pride. And the Father's not going to have any of it in his kingdom. And you better recognize any place that it can work in your life and say no to it. Once again, everything that goes on your life begins in your imaginations. And the Lord has given us his power to deal with it, to pull down strongholds, to cast down imagination, to bring every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus. That is a living reality for your life. As you den that is rare, really where denying yourself becomes very, very visible. Where you begin to recognize, wait a minute, I allow attitudes. I allow opinions. I allow emotions that are purely of myself and of my own self-interest, and that even go over into the realms of the demonic because offense and unforgiveness goes over and ultimately into the realms of the demonic. And I'm just not going to allow it anymore. That is evidence that I'm ruling me and the, not the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to allow it. Amen. This is walking in the light. As he is in the light. Then we have fellowship one with another. That is a connection. The koinonia is a connection of oneness. That is a radical connection. That is just holding hands. That isn't just pleased to sit by one another. Hallelujah. That's something that's miraculous and divine that God supplies to us. I love Atakana Yeshepahate. Hallelujah. To be devoted to seeing the church arise, to, to, to look at sorrow upon our face. And, and become angry with the Holy Ghost indignation saying that that is a false witness against God. It's an evil spirit that's come to ruin the glory of his house. Well, I'm just not coming to church anymore because I don't want to ruin anything because I'm just sad. Well, that is a terrible attitude. That really is an expression of self-domination. That really is a, a, a clear expression of self-rule and that you are going to be what you want yourself to be and that's it. Rather than repent and go, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. I don't want to be this way. Forgive me. Oh God, by your help and your grace, I'm never going to do that again. That's a right heart. That's proof that you've been born again. That's proof that you're born of the Spirit. The other is, a, is an unholy spirit. It's a rebellious spirit. It's a spirit that belongs to the sons of Adam, not the sons of God. God, the Holy Ghost, comes and gives us a great confidence that we can do what God said. He encourages us and gives us the boldness and says, yeah, you can stand up and be perfect as he is perfect and walk even as he is walks and purify yourself even as, pure as he is pure and be in the light as he is in the light and be holy as he is holy. 
That's the kind of encouragement that the encourager, the comforter gives. He doesn't come along and say, oh, you're going to be all right. And I know the pastor is hard on you. Oh, poor thing. I mean, I saw that. Oh, did you? Oh, you, oh, you, oh. <laughs> That's not the comforter of the Holy That's humanism. That's demonism. <laughs> that's solidifying. Listen, that's solidifying somebody in their unrighteous state. You sit and listen to somebody complaining and murmuring, and you don't rise up and rebuke them. Huh. You part of their, you're part of why they're going to go to hell. I don't know how the Lord's going to take you. I mean, when you got blood on your hands, why, what's the Lord going to look at you and say? When you stand before his presence and every soul that you were responsible, had part in going to hell, had part in rebellion, had part in defiance, their blood will drip from your hands. Not only according to the prophet, but because, even according to Paul, because he reckoned, reckoned what Ezekiel said. and said, I am free from the blood of all men, because I have not refrained from giving and declaring to them the whole counsel of God to tell people when you're wrong, you did wrong. People want to go on in wrong, having done wrong. They self-justified. Because they self-justified, it immediately brought them in deception. They're under the bond of deception. They believe they're right. Thus, they do not repent for their wrongdoing. And thus, they on a track called uh, death, a way, uh, in a way called destruction. Think about it. I don't want to be that way. I don't want you to be that way. I want you to get really soft before the Lord and say, Okay, Lord, I can just, I can repent. I can say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash me in your blood. I ask you to cleanse me. Anybody come talking to me some kind of nonsense, you know exactly what I'm going to tell you. If it's nonsense, I'm going to tell you it's nonsense. And I'm going to say it with the, I'm going to say it with the authority of the word. I'm going to speak the truth in love. Have you ever heard somebody speak the truth in love and say that's nonsense? Amen. Hallelujah. It's true. We just begin to judge everything by the word. Huh? We always, they're, Loving people, loving them, forgiving them, showing mercy to them, because that's just the disposition of the Holy Ghost. We don't, hold, we don't hold anything against anybody. I started practicing at a very young age, forgiving. You know why I did? Because I recognized that if I didn't forgive, I wouldn't be forgiven. And there's one thing I wanted to make sure, that I get forgiven. So I gave myself to just forgiving people. And when I, when I found places where it was hard to forgive people, I would just ask the Lord. I'd say, I'd say, Lord, fill me with your love. Give me that love, that mercy to forgive. Because I'm having a hard time with this one. And I gave myself to it. And I practiced it. And I sowed to the Spirit so that I could reap a strong maturity in forgiving. God has made me very good at forgiving. Hallelujah. That's one of my strong points. Patience is not one of my strong points, but I'm working on that one. Patience? Who has time for patience? The world is coming to an end. People are dying going to hell. We got a lot of work to get done. Get up and start moving. But I'm working on that one. I'm giving myself. I'm sowing the spirit. I'm saying, Lord, I know you want me to have patience. I know I inherit the promise through patience. And I'm, I'm better, huh? I'm, I'm getting better. No, I mean, Daniel, he's like, He's like eight years old. He said, Mom, the only fault Dad has is he doesn't have patience. <laughs> he was right. I'm like, let's go. We're on the move. We're always conquering the world. Poor Ruth Anna. She's just like me. I said, oh, Lord. Help me to wrong the right or right the wrong. She's, she's going to get it done. Praise God. When you've got a fire on the inside of your belly, man, you're going to get it done. You look at everybody that's got a fire on, side the be- on the inside of their belly, they're getting something done. Yeah. Huh? It's not, it's just not around, sit around, pat it, cake one another, and just make each other feel bad about our weaknesses and failures. Forget about it. Rebuke it strongly. Let's, make them, let's get into strengths and, and, and successes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to sow to the Spirit. You've got to make a connection with the Holy Ghost. You've got to be determined to do these things. If you're not determined to do them, if you just leave them on hold, and just come, wait, come to the meeting, and we'll feel better when we get to the meeting. Pastor, pray for us. I will pray for you, <laughs> but I can't go home with you. We have a pain-free zone. We have a sorrow-free zone in our home. 
sorrow-free zone in our life. Sad-free zone, no depression allowed. Hallelujah. We don't like depression. I learned at a very early age, a very young lot and young age, that depression is a demonic power. That before oppression is depression and after oppression is possession. We don't allow any sort of depression. We don't have to have it. Now, I understand. People allow sickness and disease in their life because they don't know how to stand up against it. I understand. People allow sorrow and melancholy and sadness in their life because they don't know how to stand up against it. But we're here to help you to understand how to stand against it. We're here to show you how to sow to the things of the Spirit, how to cast down lies and imagination, how to say no to wrong things and yes to right things, how to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost because He'll fill you with joy and depression won't find another way in. I'm going to tell you, listen to me. Those of you who deal with sorrow, sadness, have moody things going on in your life. Moodiness. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> there, you know, <clears throat> Father responds to sincerity and desperation. And if you just start going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. If that's all you can get out, but you're serious about getting filled with joy, I actually know a better way. You just begin to say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for raising again. Thank you for interceding for me. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness to me. Thank you for your goodness. I'm telling you, you're going to climb right out of whatever problem you're in. I promise you. I promise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I've been around some people say, well, oh, we just want first century church faith. I'm thinking, no, no, you don't. And they're like, well, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Because first century church faith was being baptized in the Holy Ghost and everybody speaking in tongues. People don't want that. He was coming under the authority and influence of the Holy Spirit where he fully takes control and charge of our mouth and our heart. Wow. But if we do that, they're going to persecute us. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Oh, they're not going to like us. The Lord will like us. And when Father is for you, who can be against you? Do you know how many people are standing around in this city going, how does he do that? How did they do that? They had all that huge property over there at the Naval Training Center. And now they got this other huge property. How did they do that? Because Father loves us. <laughs> and, and he's on our side. He's just with us. So when Father's with you, you're going to constantly be just right where you need to be. So don't worry, don't worry about what men are going to say. Rather, want, want what the Holy Ghost has for you. Let God make you so sensitive by yielding yourself to Him. I mean, Paul said, pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Understand. When he said in Ephesians chapter 6, pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. He's the one who already defined, he himself defined what it meant to pray in the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He said that's praying in the Holy Ghost with other tongues. That means we're praying in the Spirit. He defined it. Praying in the Spirit is praying in the heavenly language. He said pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Watching thereunto with what? Complaining. <laughs> Watching thereunto with being being concerned and worried. Somebody said, oh no, there's a storm coming. I'm like, bring it on. Bring it on. Huh? Bring it on. I, I want to see people get desperate because when they get desperate, they're going to cry out for Jesus. Amen. Hey, we got the solution for desperate right over here. 
<laughs> we got a Holy Ghost provision for this nation as soon as the lights turn on. And the lights are going to turn on. There's going to be a wake-up call when the storm comes. And the storm is coming. There's a storm coming. The handwriting is on the wall. We have, we have sought to change laws, the laws of nature. Just like an antichrist spirit. Somebody said, you know, the government's antichrist. The antichrist. No, it's just antichrist spirit. It's going on in the government. But, you know, don't sit there and point fingers at the government because the Father gave you and I the authority to make disciples out of nations. And just because we abdicating that this stuff is going on, it's time to stop moving around thinking that your lie is all about yourself. Because reality of it is, your lie will either be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ and shine with such impact that it's like shining like the noonday sun, or otherwise you just so ain't going to be non-existent. Non-existent. No lying? Non-existent. I'm not going to be non-existent. Come on now. Come on now, in Jesus' name. I want to read just a couple of verses of Scripture to you. And then I, I just want... I want you to I want you to flow in the anointing that is present. I want you to receive from heaven. I want you to just know and understand. I want you to understand just how to begin to move naturally, not under pressure, not under some kind of constraint, not because you have to. That's why at the times of worship and praise, at the beginning of the meeting, it's a great opportunity for you just to begin to start flowing. I know that some of you can't sing. We'll rap. <laughs> just step out there and just start letting it, just let it flow out with just the words. Hallelujah. Enjoy His presence. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy, I said the president, so enjoy the Lord. Enjoy him. Enjoy him. Enjoy him. Somebody said, I know how you do that. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. The connection with the Holy Ghost. Building yourself up in most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Spirit, singing, speaking yourself. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You sow to the Spirit like this on a daily basis. Now, yeah. let me just tell you. You will reap just living out a natural life. You'll know, well, you'll know exactly where to go, know where not to go. You'll know what to do. You'll know what's going on around you. You'll have the insight of the holy. You'll have whatever you need for whatever situation. And what a wonderful place to live. Amen. Father will bless whatever you do. Amen. Somebody's like, oh, I just need to find the right thing. No, you don't. Whatever you do, you prosper. But there's a condition, isn't there? Huh? Is there a condition? Don't stand in the way of sinners. Don't walk in the way of sinners, of the ungodly. Don't sit in the council of the wicked. And, you know, there's things that we're going to have to pay attention to. We put our trust in Father, make Him the sole object of our trust. And Father said He's going to provide for us, and we won't even know when, when we won't even know when there's drought coming. Yeah. Our leaves will always be always be green, and never wither. We'll always be bearing fruit, and whatever we do, will prosper. If I'm whatever things I'm doing is not prospering, I need some correction in my life. Praise God for His chastening. Amen. When I'm going to be stubborn, God's chasing me right, left, and center, and I'm just still doing the same old thing. We call it riding the rain. It's 
doing the same thing, still going in the same direction. God's pulling everything he possibly can to get us to turn. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, he knows how to get us to turn. If we're willing, if there's any willingness in us to turn. Father, you'll find Father in the midst. You, you'll find Father doing and in the midst of the, the wind that rends the rocks. The earthquake, the great earthquake. And, and, and the hot, burning, ferocious fire. But you won't hear him speaking there. You've got to learn how to hear the still, small voice. As fellowship and communion with the Lord. I'm, I'm earnest tonight. I'm telling you, God the Holy Ghost is here in a very unique way. And I'm earnest tonight for some of you who have not had a breakthrough of moving forward in the things of the Spirit. You're still held back in the same sorrows of heart, the same problems, the same emotional issues that you've had for many years. You've not been liberated to flow in the Holy Ghost. I'm earnest tonight to see you receive from heaven that which the angel of the Lord is here to supply to you. It's up to you. The word's going forth. The correction's going forth. The choice is placed before you to be able to choose. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is here. The divine working of His power who will work and do of His goodwill on the inside of you is here. You have to respond. People, we want to seek Holy Ghost conviction. Return to the church. But until Holy Ghost conviction is in the church, in our hearts, it's not going to be anywhere beyond the framework of the walls of the church until God's people begin to cooperate with Him. It begins with you and I. We respond first to the Holy Spirit. We participate with Him so that the world can be blessed. We participate with him so that we can be a light and the world won't be in darkness, for example. We begin to receive those things which he is doing and profit from the things he is doing in our life so that everybody else can come under the Holy Ghost influence instead of the blind, mind-blinding spirit of deception, the mind-blinding spirit of deception to have a hold on people's minds sitting in the church. Thus they will work all the more in the midst of the world because we're the remedy we're the solution if we're not if we don't walk blameless and peer before the Lord there is no remedy for the perverse and crooked world there's no salt there's no healing provision there's no flow and testimony of the gospel no word of life being held forth before them we've got to allow these things to be stirred in our life we've got to recognize where we've hardened our hearts against the lord we've got to recognize where we walked headlong in participating with the world and the world system we've got to recognize where we've allowed ourselves to be so drawn in to unholy things that we've just self-justified we just got to lay ourselves out before the lord get honest and sincere before him and let the Lord begin to correct everything about our life. Let him put his finger on everything, every dimension of our life. And as we do, what we're going to have is we're going to have the overflow of those things that he described in his word. They'll be in our life. They'll be evidence in our life. It's not hard. You don't have to cut yourself. You don't have to bleed. You don't have to beg. Probably you have to do something much more difficult than that, though, in some ways. You got to deny yourself. Because people have made themselves king and queens of their world. They lived by their own answers instead of living by God's, depending upon Him, living by His answers. They walked in their own mind instead of walking in the mind of Christ. They never made the transition of coming under the rule of God's word, of God's spirit, 
of, of God's structure, his church, that to which he's placed in the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for what reason? For what reason? For the maturing of the saints, perfecting of the saints. And for what other reason? No, building up the body of Christ. So if there's something lacking in the church, what should the preacher be preaching about? That which is lacking. So why then would we point the finger and say, ah, he's preaching on that which is lacking? It's a wonderful life, living it with the Holy Spirit. It's a wonderful life. He's a great provider. He's amazing. He provides for me so much better than I provided for me. Amazing. When I provided for me, I had nothing. Really, I didn't. Very little. When I stepped out and I let the Lord with total abandonment, no longer just... I was half provider, and he did. I did fifty percent. He did fifty percent. Hmm, I did seventy five percent. He did twenty five percent. Because that's all I let him do. I started letting him be do one hundred percent. I stepped out in total abandonment and said, "Lord, you provide food for us; we'll eat. If you don't provide food for us; we will not eat. Lord, you provide raiment for us and clothing." We'll be clothed, otherwise we'll be like the prophet. And if you want us to walk around and prophesy naked, amen. And I think the church would actually, who knows what would happen. Excuse me. Really, all I, was <coughs> all I was doing was agreeing with what he already said. I wasn't coming with a new, a new idea for him. He just simply said, if you'll do this, if you take no thought for what you should eat, take no thought for what you wear, watch what I'll do for you. I'll provide for you. I'll provide for you better than I'll provide for Solomon. I clothe the grass of the field. Look at how they're doing. Look how look how well the flowers are doing. Look how well the birds are doing. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for your perfection in this place. I thank you for all the people that are here that will let your hand of correction come upon them. I thank you, Father, for everybody in here that's saying tonight with greater resolve, I'm not going to have it my way. I'm going to have it God's way. I'm not going to just go so far as I agree. I'm going to go far all the way with you and let you, Lord, dictate and decide how things are going to look and how they shall be fashioned. I'm going to step over into the miracle realm. I'm going to leave everything, come follow you. I want you to picture tonight you leaving everything, come following Jesus. It's not about quitting your job. It's not about you going here or going there. It's about you with total abandonment, giving yourself over to obey God's word, to let Christ Jesus live in you so that you can begin to shine as a light wherever you're at. So that you can begin to cooperate with the movings of the Holy Spirit. First and foremost, His Holy Ghost conviction. To walk in Holy Ghost conviction yourself. You know how you walk in Holy Ghost conviction? As soon as the Lord begins to correct you about something, you immediately respond and you repent and you, and you obey. Oh, the Holy Ghost conviction is strong in your life now. When you're resisting the Holy Ghost and you're not responding to His correction, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost conviction isn't going to be much manifested in your life or to your life or through your life. 
I'm just going to wrap this up here quickly with, just want to read this couple of verses of scripture to you <clears throat> here in Ephesians. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm here in Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 15 says, But speaking the truth in love, you may grow up into all things, which is the head, even Christ Jesus. This is laying out this foundation that you're not going to be children tossed to and fro anymore. You're going to get established over here. You're committed. You're consecrated to doing it God's way. Listen to this. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part makes increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye from now on walk no more as the nations walk in the vanity of their minds having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance which is in them because of the blindness of his heart who being past feeling because of their unwillingness to respond to God, their past feeling, having given themselves over to lasciviousness. Satan has a strategy here. He's created in this culture of our world that we live in right now, around us right now, he's created lasciviousness on every hand to where that if people aren't going to draw lines for themselves in obedience to the Holy Ghost, they're going to be snared by this thing. And it's literally going to result in a separation and a being, a being cut off from that which Christ Jesus, the head, would supply. If we're willing to grow up in Him who is the head of the body, and then verse 16, looking at the body who connected properly in Him. How we connected properly in Him. The Holy Spirit sets us each one in the body of Christ according to His will. And then we begin to faithfully function there. And as we faithfully function there, the supply of the Spirit that allows us to have that anointing increases in our life. And God allows even a, a, a more abundant supply so that there's a full measure of whatever dimension of that grace where it's a miracle working power a full measure of the miracle working power or the gifts of healing it's a full measure it's 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 that which jesus described these works and greater works if it's the word knowledge it's the full measure of it if it's the if it's prophecy it's the full measure of it it's that which each part in each member has now been able to function in that supply that comes to us right from the Lord Jesus Christ, who has given to us the Holy Spirit, who is the one who manifests this work of God in our life. That's what makes increase to every part. That's what causes the church to, be, to edify itself in this dimension of God's divine power and love. That's the ultimate, res the ultimate result, is the church shining like the sun at noonday. But there's not going to be that kind of connection if we're over here walking in blindness of heart and ignorance. We're over here being snared by all these things that Satan lies in wait to deceive us with. There has, there has to simply be in our hearts and in our lives, dear people, an understanding of sobriety of the working of what Jesus did for us, the working of what the Holy Spirit is doing with us right now and what God has purposed, how God has purposed to live and function and move. And if we just get this in order, if we just understand this operation of God, who we are in God, where He's placed us, why He's placed us there, how to make these proper connections, how to separate ourselves from the things that God says not, cannot be in our life, and if they are, they're going to stop us. How to connect with those things which God has commanded us to do, which causes us to increase everything automatically it's it just miraculously results in that which god has ordained like a fruit like a fruit going from a little flower going from a little flower a beautiful little flower a beautiful little bud to a full grown ripened fruit 
But if we want to have it our own way, if we modify, if we won't submit to what God's doing, if we want to reorganize, if we don't want to participate, then we're just stuck. force of man's will is a powerful force. It can, it can defy God. I want all of you to stand with me. Father, we thank you that you made it simple, that you made it all about a relationship with you, that you look at us tonight and you say, if any man is weary, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Are you weary? Heavy laden? Because really, when you look at it, it's the dynamics of how easy the Lord's made it. Just come to me, I'll give you rest. Relax. Cease from your own works. God, cease from your own works. Enter into the rest. From this day forward, God works. You have a need? Just ask Him. Lord, I have a need. How many people got healed this morning? How many of you got how many got touched by the Lord this morning? You got healed in your body this morning. He's just so good. I walked out of the church service this morning so drunk in the Holy Ghost. So overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord. You know what that is? That's the comfort of the Holy Ghost saying, look, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to work this work. Just stand, and, just stand and keep stirring everybody up. Keep prophesying to it. Keep declaring it. Ha <laughs> ha. Keep prophesying to it. Keep declaring it. Begin to, begin to engage in bringing every dimension of your, of your life into the submission to Jesus Christ. Begin to engage in getting excited about that all the nations of the earth will sing that Jesus Christ is King. All the nations. They might be running around right now celebrating themselves congratulating one another on their iniquity. But very soon, all the nations of the earth shall sing that Jesus Christ is King. All the earth shall shout that He is Lord of everything. And we're the first to know. And we have the right and the privilege of being filled with all of His glory of being baptized in His fire and of in His presence and being able to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look in your life now and you're going to have to start subduing everything that's not according 
to the rule of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If it doesn't belong in heaven, if it doesn't belong in the holies of holies, it does not belong in our lives. And it's time we get real. Because if we will, Father, listen, Father, listen to me. One day I was saying, Lord, they're profaning the name of your Son in the earth. And the Spirit of the Lord said, no, they're not. Father made me to understand he was dedicated to glorifying the name of his son. And when he's got a people purified, zealous of good works, he will release the glory that will bring glory and honor to his name because you can't profane his name when the glory is not there. Do you listen to me? Father's not going to allow the beauty and the splendor and the glory of Jesus to be manifested through our lives the way that he wants them, wants it to be manifested. And then we go out and do what Israel did, get involved in adultery and lasciviousness and uncleanness. That will pollute his name. That will, all we all, by and large, most of what the church is enjoying is just simple, the mercy of God, of his call, the manifest presence of his call to repentance. The manifest presence of his call to surrender our lives to him. That's primarily what we're, and we think we're living in full-blown revival. No, we're not. I'll show you full-blown revival. We'll go look at how that five barley loaves and two fishes will feed 5,000, not counting men and women, and everybody that shows up, the blind, the maimed, the crippled, the lame, the, the hardest of hearts, the desperate of souls, everybody touched, everybody set free, everybody delivered. Right now, in this beautiful manifest presence of God, Father is revealing himself enough to, so that you can really know who he is, so you can make an honest and true, sincere decision of whether or not you're going to give your members over to unrighteousness or whether you're going to give your life and your members over to God to let him be your ruler. It's time we let Jesus come and rule. It's time we step up to another level of submission to heaven's divine call and purpose. And Jesus. Father, I know that you're here. And I recognize right now that only you can pierce the hearts of self-justification. Only you, God, in your mercy, can cause people to see where that they've not been cooperating with you. The things, Lord, that have hindered and held back your manifest glory and power in our lives. So, Father, we thank you right now that in your loving kindness and in your mercy, you're going to do this work. And that there's not going to be a single soul in this place that will resist you. That everybody in this place they're going to cooperate with you. They're going to respond to you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the mighty moving of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to repent. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to get it right. Father, we thank you for the privilege of walking in holiness like you're in holiness. To walking in the light like you're in the light. To walking in this world even as you're in the world. To purify ourselves even as you're pure. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood, which is drink indeed, and for your flesh, which is meat indeed. Thank you, Lord, that you bore our sins in your own body on the tree, that we now, being dead to sin, might live unto righteousness. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful work of grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the mighty moving 
of your power and of your glory in this place. Yes. That there will be none that are sick or diseased and none walking in sin and iniquity. That everybody's heart will be sold out to you. That everybody's life will be hungering and thirsting after righteousness. That your glory might be made manifest and revealed in this place. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Kata gininga la maseka day. Kata lininga la basaka na ka day a day. So a few weeks ago. Lord gave me a very specific direction. It's very specific where it needs. I was just asking him for this year for what he wanted me to do. And he gave me the phrase embracing maturity. And he began to speak to me about how it's not just a matter of deciding not to be immature, but that you actually have to know what it is that you are trying to do and trying to reach for. You can't just choose to not be sorrowful, but you have to choose and embrace joy. And you have to reach out for these things. Mm. And he made me go through and, and identify some of the things in my life of where I've been lacking in maturity and those things that he wanted to change. And then he made me find the positive things, those things that I'm supposed to embrace, those things, those ways that I'm supposed to love and those ways that I'm supposed to, supposed to do those things. And it was, and it was, it was, it was good. And then just the very next Sunday night service, Pastor Mike gave us an instruction. He told us to go, he, you know, he asked us, what does it look like to be filled with the Holy Ghost? And he told us to go and write it down and itemize it out. What does this look like? What? What are, the, what are the things, the recognizable factors that, that you would see in someone who was flowing in the anointing? And then to ask someone in your life if you looked like that and to build that accountability in, you know, like, am I speaking to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? Am I praying without ceasing in the Holy Ghost? Am I loving? Am I reaching out? Am I doing these things? Because we can't always recognize those things for ourselves. And I just, I just wanted to, I just, oh, I just, I just bore, the, bore such witness in my, in my spirit that that's what we needed to do. And I know that we wrestle with this in kids' church all the time. You know, Pastor Daniel and Pastor Brad are always trying to distill it down to the most, to just the most simplest things, the most simplest tasks that we're supposed to do. And if we would, if we would just embrace those simple tasks then, you know, it would change us. It would change our lives, and we would, we would have that maturity. We would be able to reach out for that. And so often, you know, so often we're so forgetful. We get so distracted. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to get caught up in these other things and forget these simple things. These things, I mean, that the Lord spoke to me, you know? He spoke to me. He worked through it, you know? And I still, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not on my, the forefront of my mind. It's not always there, you know? He's not always before me, but I want him to be. Yeah. I want him to be so much. <laughs> yeah. That's the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference. Just let the, just let the flood light of heaven shine upon your soul. So let God the Holy Ghost talk to you. He's not going to point the finger of accusation. He's just going to simply say to you, look, I love you. Let me live. Let me bless you. Let me give you these things. Let me do my work in the midst of you. We come 
to the risen Savior, whose scars and nail prints are there for us. Who invites us to have everything that he's provided, to have it freely. Who gives to us everything that we need for strength, for change, so that we might have the abundant life filled up with his manifest presence and glory. Let's just do it. Let's just decide that we're moving into heaven. Let's decide that we live in heaven. Let's decide that we live in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Annalyn, there's a Holy Ghost shaking going on in your life. There's a Holy Ghost moving going on in your life. It's just nothing short of the power of the living God getting you ready to fully represent Him. This is miracle realm. I want to see the anointing. I want you to respond to the anointing that's here right now. There is an anointing. There is an act of God. There is something that Father has been speaking a word for more than two hours right now for you to respond to. You need to respond to it. There's a manifestation of the power of God where you come under His word and you respond to his word, there's an influence. Hallelujah. Of the Holy Ghost. That if you respond to it, the things that God has spoken becomes a living reality in your life. Hallelujah. 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 Ha ha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a peace for you. There's a joy for you. There's some of you, I just see God, I see God as it were writing revival all over you. Writing awakening all over you. Writing gifts of the Spirit. Manifestations of the power of God just written on you. Just written in you. Oh, Sakina Matatea. Oh, Sakina Matatea. Baramo Sakina Lana Manadea. That's it. That's it. Mangalaya Sipakadea. No matter what you find yourself in, find yourself rather rejoicing. Don't be overwhelmed with doubt, but rather rise up in faith. Don't listen to those voices that you listened to in the past. But rather, now listen to that word of heaven that has been delivered to us by Christ Jesus, our God, our King, our Savior, and established by the Holy Ghost. So Tagana Nishi Otulana Mana Itias. Those of you who got who have hurts in your life, you're, gonna to, you're just gonna have to cut it off. Cut it off right now. Just lay it out. Lay it out before the Lord. Cut the thing off right now. Cut it off right now. Cut it off. Do not respond to unholy emotions anymore. Just make a commitment that it's cut off. You're not responding to it anymore. You're giving it no place. It can't, those hurts can't hurt you no more. Trisha, here's what the Lord says. Keep your hands up. Here's what the Lord says. All the doubt, 
all the confusion, all the things that you've listened to in the past that try to steal your joy and your confidence. Father says he strengthens you right now and gives you a grace and a divine ability at this moment in time. Right now, it's yours so that you can just throw it down at your will. You could say, no, I will not listen to you. And just return, turn now towards heaven from this time on. Or, and you will just begin to joy and rejoice. And what will happen is faith will fill your heart. And you'll find this whole new life in Christ Jesus and the things of the Spirit. Defeat's over. <laughs> Defeat has come to an end. Hallelujah. Defeat's over. It's come to an end. Don't you, don't you worry about a thing either. Don't you worry about your children. Don't you worry about your house. Father loves you more than you realize. He spared not his own son, but offered him up for your sins. She'll also by him freely give you everything that you need. Thank you, Jesus. There's a word of God at work right now. It's here in the atmosphere. There's fruit that God wants to produce out of his word right now. Ha. Huh. Bate, Lisa Pai. Bate, Lisa Pai. No stress. I, no stress. In Jesus' name. No stress. We need faith, not stress. I said no stress. None. None. Father, I thank you for your blessing on Cade. Mulig, not Muley, but Mulig. <laughs> I thank you for your blessing, Father. Kapataya on Cade and Ruthena. I want, you to, I want you to agree with me in prayer right now. Father, we send the word right now towards the Philippines. My, my father, without, without a miracle, my father is in serious condition, serious situation. His body's very weak. And so we send the word right now in Jesus' name. Every yoke broken in Jesus' name. Everything that the enemy would try to do, right now we remove it out of the way. And Father, we praise you and we thank you for your word of life. Father, we thank you for your crown of glory now in Jesus' name upon his life. We speak healing into his body right now. Speak healing into his body, strength into his body right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Rabakataya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Katuya Rabakito on the Macheki, a Kara Makeki. Sakota on the Sepiki, and Banjeki at the Mosea. Bala so tala la baki pro so talko isi la la ma ase. Sutara baki ada da basa to yo la mosoto. Te karamanja yela mandaya. So kura baba bare. 
thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that breaks off the yokes of Southern California. Thank you, Father God, for the bright shining of your light, for your revival fires burning bright here in this nation. Father, thank you for a great awakening. Thank you for a revival, oh God, in the midst of your people. Thank you, Father, for a hungering and thirsting after the things of heaven. Now in Jesus' name, Satan will not be able to hinder a single soul in this place anymore or lie to you. No longer will the imaginations creep up on you and control you or even influence you. But by the word of the Lord and by the spirit of the living God, you begin to live out your life. In the name of Jesus, receive power from on high. 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 Oh, Sadita. Oh, God. Sickness and disease. I serve you notice right now in the name of Jesus. You have no right in this place. You have no right in the people's lives in this place. You have no right in this house. We break your stronghold, your influence. Father, we thank you for your great signs and wonders. We thank you for the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power in our lives. We thank you for the working of your miracles. Lord, we thank you for the communion of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for this fellowship with you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being empowered and endued. Oh, Kadaya Bodhisattva. Ikatata Mosatea. Ikatata Mosatea. Jesus. Jesus. After Daryl, come here. See, kind of bossa de kilina matrata. The transfer to Daniel. And Jesus. Every crooked place made straight. That's what God does, you know. All the rough places He makes smooth. Zoe, Claire, Jacqueline, come here. Ruth. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, come stand here. Start right here. Start with, start with big sister. Start with.
Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. The glory of heaven. The glory of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prosate. Prosate. Kotande. Koshende. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kurasane is she like. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive from heaven. Just let the, let the Holy Ghost touch you. Father's here. Let him touch you right now. Father wants to anoint you. He wants to anoint you with a fresh fire from heaven. He wants to anoint you with fresh oil from his presence. He wants to use you. Ha, ha. Wants to send you everywhere you go with his presence and with his glory manifested in your life. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. <laughs> Jesus. Kurasara baba brebe de shikiri de lomo mozane. Hambra baki la 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 mozata yapi. Hala basikara la la mandala la basoto romosite. Oh, zadane se. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, nastiest. Ila mast. Out of your belly flows these rivers. Rivers from on high, the presence of the Lord. Out of your belly flows these rivers, these rivers from on high, the presence. Hey, now that's the anointing God right there. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Urasi si gaduna na matiki she prides. Lorasa daradeki di na na masatara ne beki. Ibrasa tatai na na makuchi ya lasaya. Biara satara ne yekeshi. Oh, jenene. Just yield yourself to the Lord. Don't turn internal. Yield yourself to the Lord. Begin to worship Him. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Don't go inward, go outward. Go outward to Him. Go to Him. Just lift your hands towards heaven, Jonathan. In the name of Jesus. Fire! The fire! Jesus! In Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus. Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty signs and wonders. Thank you, Father, for the working of your Spirit. Say, the Lord Jesus Christ brought me here so that I might receive from the Spirit. So that I might be built up and established. Sent everywhere. The whole fourth the word of life. Jesus. Just take hold of God. Just take hold of God with your heart. Don't get stuck in your problem. Don't get stuck in your need. Just begin to give Him thanks for all that He's done. Look at what He's done. Look at what he's done. Just look at what he's done. What's up? interpretation of that Let's see if my mic is on there's a miracle in the house listen there's a miracle in the house give there's a miracle in the house just begin to give begin to give as it, it works this way 
as you give praise, as you release yourself, we hold on to things. In our own insecurity, we hold on to ourselves. In our own insecurity, we hold on to that which we have. In our own insecurity, we hold on to those things that we trust in. The Lord wants us to release it. We begin to release these things in praise and thanksgiving because what's going to happen is problems and circumstances would grip you to where that you can't give thanks because the problem's too big, because the situation's too overbearing. But as you begin to give, as you begin to give praise, God works a miracle. It's the same way in the, it, God teaches us through the finances. You know, and I already told you guys tonight really what we're just reaching into God for because we have to have what Father's doing with us right now and where we're taking the mission training center, the things that the Lord has done, has given to us to do. We have to have, a, we have to have, we have to have provision, miracle provision in finances, miracle provision in human resources. And we're watching the Lord put it all in order. And somebody said, somebody said to me not too long ago, you know, are you going to keep the church in San Diego? Are you kidding me? Look at what the Lord has given us. The parking lot's going to be filled, I tell you right now. We, we really focus in, and I need to be more people to focus on the, the development of the food bank because it's going to be not to the too distant future that we're going to want to have that food bank really big. And still, it's going to be miracle multiplication to take care of the needs of the masses of the people that are going to be without food, without water, without help. They won't know where to turn. They don't have nobody. See, because we abide in the presence of the Almighty under the shelter of the Almighty, under the shadow of the Almighty, hallelujah, we're good. We're taken care of. We got all provision, hallelujah. <laughs> no worries. But there's a lot of people that don't have that. And Father is going to cause us to be provision. He's going to cause us to be spiritual provision, physical provision, material provision, food resource provision. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, imagine this. Imagine that there is, just imagine a situation where there's 40% unemployment. Well, that's unprecedented in the United States of America. 40% of unemployment. I'm going to tell you right now, God's people are going to be in the 60% 60, 60 employed. And it's just to uh, help you understand that right now. We're not running, ducking for cover. We're going to be the provision. Amen. Abraham stepped into great glory and abundance in the midst of famine, in the midst of great chaos, national chaos. When, cha when a nation's in chaos, we can go in and spoil it for the kingdom of God. See the atmosphere changed. We're getting ready. If you don't, if you're, if you listen, that's what we're talking to you about flowing the Holy Ghost. Because it, the only way you're ready is to, to be filled up with the Holy Ghost. To learn how to, to have already learned how to cooperate with Him and move and function and flow in this anointing. Hallelujah. Because when when the trouble comes, it's just too late. You you can't go buy oil. You're just stuck. You just wait. We'll be back later. Just sit here kind of thing. I would hate somebody tell me, you just have to, oh, you just have to sit here. Say, well, can I get some of your oil? No. You're going to get your own. Amen? So we're going to help you understand how to get your own. Amen. We're going to have, we're going to help you in Jesus' name how to understand how to move and function, operate in the things of the Spirit where you never run out, you have plenty. to make it through the night. Huh? God commissions you to go everywhere and do miracles. But without the anointing, you can't do it. Those who, those who are receiving the things of the Spirit, you're able to respond to the anointing? Be certain. That same anointing that you've responded to and that you've received, 
will flow out of you to meet whatever need you encounter. Just go ahead and give yourself to the things of the Spirit. Go ahead and give yourself. Praying for people. Believing to see their lives transformed and changed. Father, we ask you to increase our faith with respect to seeing souls come into the kingdom. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that there will be a continual praying in the Holy Ghost and supplication for a lost and dying world so that we'll begin to move in miracle faith and miracle anointing to see mind-blinding spirits broken, to see the power of Satan removed from off of people and the power of the living God take hold of them. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And that's what we're going to do. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know, I don't know the I don't know these the steps. If you told me to diagram for you how the Lord is going to shake the nations through our lives, I couldn't do that for you, but I can tell you he's gonna do it. I can tell you I know a step right now that has to be taken. And that's what I'm doing. I'm with everything that is within me, passionately taking a step that I know I must take. That God has confirmed over and over again to me. That we constantly lay out before the Lord and say, Lord, if you want to do it a different way, stop us, correct us. But instead, he keeps blessing us and moving us forward in it. And to be able to be used by God to where that you can have a, a vision and faith and authority to see our nation change, to see our location, San Diego, Southern California, impacted by the power of God and at the same time have a vision for the nation, to have a means, a way, a, a, a plan from heaven to see m missions shake nations that have been closed. The Lord has given me three things that I have right now that the nations, you name the nation, they want it right now. They want it. If I go to them and I say, I will bring into your nation the ability to do these three things. I don't care what nation it is. Kashmir, North Korea, you name the nation. They'll be pleading with me for it. Oh. And we're going to watch God open up nations at the very highest level. Because we're going to give them cutting edge technology in raising and growing food. That will result in them opening the doors to us to be able to do mass evangelism crusades when nobody else can do it. I see it right now as already being a part of what's going to happen in Cuba. People, view, there's a huge food, food shortage. And when we walk in and say, look, we'll teach you how to do tissue culture. We'll teach you how to grow, we'll teach you how to grow 100,000 plants just from what's contained in half a test tube. We'll show you how to take one cow and produce out of her 300 cows inside of three years. We're going to show you how to do unique things in fishery science that the Lord has given to us. It's just they, everyone wants to feed their people, and we're getting ready. J JJ and Nicole's going to go, and they're going to help us with our vertical plant system, starting our horticulture, which ultimately goes to tissue culture. We're going to be, you know, we've got so much. We have so much need within the human resource. 
as I mentioned, we're just, I'm just going to go with what Father gives us, and he'll multiply it. I'm going to go next week, and I'm going to learn embryo transfer. I'm going to learn how to produce a bunch of embryos in uterus, flush them out, freeze them, and then put them into other, other host cows. Amen. How to split those up, make twins. And then we're going to go beyond that. We're just, just unbelievable cutting edge stuff that the Lord has given us the opportunity to go. I, I get to go learn from the, actually the father of the science, the person who actually is the one who elucidated the whole uh, science of it. And. Uh, operational procedure of it pretty cool i don't really want to do that but i don't have anybody else, anybody else want to do it but we're going to then we're going to teach a bunch of people teach pratt teach josh nichols your arms aren't right teach Cade. see other people you gotta have certain, you gotta be born with certain features to be able to do this. Really, says when it comes to cows. It's not a pretty thing. The things that the Lord, the Lord, the things that the Lord sparked us with in terms of fishery science and what we can do with just the transporting, don't we, we just transport eggs, fish eggs, to wherever we go and the things that the Lord has given us, the systems that the Lord has already given us that I actually did my master's dissertation on. That's gonna work. It's just to, it's a totally new approach to food source, everything for fish. We're gonna Produce a bunch of food for people, spiritually and naturally. I'm getting some Holy Ghost technology right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm getting, I'm getting supply of the Spirit. The ability to multiply it. It's happening right now. I'm practicing translation right now. I'm, I'm being transfigured right now. That's what the glory of heaven does for us is the ministry of the, new, of the church. We're believing God for a transition to take place where business serves ministry instead of ministry serving business. We're believing God fundamentally that what's going to happen is there's going to be businesses raised up within the context of the church where people are working full time in the kingdom of God. Instead of making a bunch of wealth for the heathen, there's enough wisdom and insight to make wealth for the kingdom of God where everybody gets paid really good salaries, but all of the wealth, instead of going it in, going to make a few rich people richer, it's just all being funneled to the kingdom of God. Where 90% of the wealth is going into the kingdom of God, 10% is going to overhead, including good salaries. That's business serving ministry. That's where you're all day working. You might be at the cute computer pounding things out, but you're making money. Not only, you're not only, there's not only a provision for your own life, but you're literally generating wealth to do missions, to do mass advances and crusades, to reach souls where every dollar earned is about the value of a soul. To price and put a value upon the soul and know how to go after it. We watch all of our human resources, we watch all of our talent get drained right into the world system. And somebody's got to get wise enough, insightful enough to recognize God's in heaven, He don't want it that way, and if I cooperate with Him, we'll change culture. We'll change it. Yes. Now, it's real to me, that's why I can move. I, I want God to make it real to you so you can move too. So that you can do it too. 
You say, well, I don't know what to do. Just do what God gives you to do within the capacity of what God gave you from the framework of skills and what you have within the framework of the anointing. Then go ahead and believe God for more in the realms of the anointing and you won't be stuck no more. I'm not going to live my life for myself and do a few things and die and go to heaven. I'm going to live my life fully for the king and conquer the, conquer the, the, the thing. Come on now, listen. Conquer the thing. I mean, I, I, believe, that, I believe that the Lord wants us to have 100,000 acres here in the United States of America. He wants to possess land in every nation right now that is unreached. Approximately 100 nations. I'm on it. I'm on it. I am laser focused. Go to bed at night thinking about it. Who needs sleep? Kind of thing. We miracle people of God will get this thing done. We'll just do it by, just do it by the divine grace. I remember anybody who's been given the divine grace, you're moving in it. That's You're moving and you're doing what God has given you, what you've allowed him to give you. And all I want you to do is hunger and thirst so Father can give you more so you can do more because you can't do anything beyond the capacity of what God's given you. Really, and it's honestly, you can't do any more beyond the capacity of what you have allowed God to give you because can people turn that around and make it an excuse? The Father's not put a limitation on anybody. I just want to see. I, I'm, I just, you know, the Lord just showed us the other day. The Lord just showed us the other day a, pot, a potential that is huge right now where we can see something that's happening right here in this city that we can turn around to be a business that serves ministry that produces huge amounts of wealth for the kingdom. And the Lord is showing us in, in dimensions of where there is no investment needing to be made, just human resources. And the human resources from day one being paid good salaries. And the Lord just giving us creative ideas. You know, he saw, he's seen, he's seen our labors. He's seen our, he's seen our desperation. He's seen our going after it. He's seen it. We've not, I've not let up. You know, I might, I might have, I've not done everything right. But I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't, I've never let up. I've never been stopped. I'm never, and the wind's never gone out of my cells a day. I look back over my life and see my cells filled every day with the Holy Ghost, moving in the direction of a heavenly vision. And we want you to just come follow our faith because we got some good faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Person said to me, said, you, you can't pastor that small of a church doing all that you're doing. I said, yeah, we got, though we be but small. We, got a, we might have a little group of people, but everybody's in. With everything that they know, you're in with everything that, you're, that you know, and there's nobody in any way taking away from that. We're just telling you there's a whole lot more that you can have. That's all. That's it. Hallelujah. And Father's one, Holy Ghost is the one who decides, and He decides on everybody, and He supplies to us as we hungry, as we thirsty. So many people come to revivalists over, these, over the years, over the centuries, say, why can't I step in? And over the years, over the centuries, all every revivalist has really basically said the same thing. Got to get hungry and thirsty. For all the way from the days of Jesus and even before in the days of Jeremiah. Amen. Just get hungry. Amen. We'll find a bunch of people around you, love them, tell them, that you love them, bless them, participate with God, participate in the manifest presence. If you don't think that you feel the manifest presence, the Lord just begin to worship him and praise him and thank him for his manifest presence and it won't be long when you begin to be overwhelmed with the manifest presence. Hallelujah. 